Welcome back. This is GMAX 1.2 for the beginning modeler video number 34. 34. Uh, the focus of which, or the topic of which, is build and animate gear parts. And this is part 4, focusing on the nose gear and uh, the differences between the nose gear setup and the main gear. Hi, my name is Milton Shoup, and we're going to follow on from the previous series where we <clears throat> built the uh, the main gear and animated it and now the topic is going to be focused on the nose gear and let's talk about the differences essentially you build it the same way as as you do the uh, main gear from the top gear the lower gear the wheel and tire and the scissors so all those parts are the same, uh, including the uh, retracting link bar, and they're all basically animated the same. <clears throat> There's uh, some additional eye candy on here. Uh, this <clears throat> I set this up to to uh, animate the uh, the uh, strut cover door that sits back here, <clears throat> but. Uh, other than that, and the one major difference I want to talk about in this video is the part called C underscore wheel. <clears throat> it is the component that uh, allows you to animate steering for your nose gear or for your tail gear, either one. And they're animated pretty much the same way. So, with all the parts the same, the upper gear used between uh, animates between 0 and 100 or anywhere. And they don't have to start on uh, 0, by the way. They just have to be in that 0 to 100 <clears throat> keyframe range. Uh, you notice this one starts at 10. And the reason for that is I start opening the doors at 0 through 9. To so that the wheel when it drops down because it's right up against the door uh, the, the doors are clear when I start the the uh, uh, gear animation so I, I wait 10 frames for the gear doors to open then I start bringing down the, the gear and uh, finish out on frame 100 <clears throat> and I'll show you the all of that in operation here well I can show it to you right now let's just let's see unhide my name and we'll exclude those two and we'll unhide so you can see let's get up a little closer here if I can grab the right button down here you can see the do doors come open between 0 and 9. So a quick open on the doors. And these normally are mechanically controlled. So when the gear starts moving, it automatically flips the doors open to mechanical links. And then starting with 10, I start moving the gear, as you can see here. And you can see the strut door coming open as well, strut cover. and on to uh, 200 and you'll notice if you click on one of these doors <clears throat> you'll see the keyframes are animated 0 to 9 uh, on this particular aircraft once the uh, gear is clear of the doors which happens by 82 frame 82 here the main doors go closed for various reasons. So I go ahead and close those doors up to the frame 100 and they're closed. So we regain our aerodynamics and what little nose lift comes out of that. <clears throat> and in order to make that function correctly you have to open the doors to a keyframe, set another keyframe further out where you want to start to close and hold those doors open till you get to that keyframe. Otherwise, if you did not use this keyframe 82, uh, starting at 10, the doors would slowly begin to close and end up closing out here. So you have to have an additional keyframe to keep them open. 
and then allow them to close there at the end. So that's the way that works. So that's a little different. Well, it's not really. I mean, I have the uh, mo a lot of nacelle, nacelle doors or some nacelle doors open the same way for the main gear open and close the same way <clears throat> just to improve aerodynamics decrease drag so that's what that parts all about um, you'll see also I've got a little eye candy animation back here on this door I'm, I have no details about how that was really uh, how that's really supposed to work in this aircraft and I have no up close photos to show it. it does show a part here but it doesn't show exactly how it's animated so another bit of uh, artistic license going on there I know it's kind of weird but <laughs> that's the way it works so anyhow that's uh, let's see if I can no I guess I can't so let's go back here and uh, get those things out of the way now Let's see, I'm going to select subtree and invert, and I'm selected. So let's get that out of the way so we can talk about this gear. And let's get rid of the eye candy here. It's, uh, I'm having trouble seeing down there. <coughs> These are just your standard triangular gear braces at the top of the gear. and. Uh, or uh, lateral stability and this is the pivot point that's connected to uh, there's another triangular brace in here that provides support for all this and this is the retract bar which is also animated as you can see there <clears throat> so we know about how all that stuff works with we'll, well, excuse me we'll uh, hide that stuff and get it out of our face while we talk about the main things here and there's another part of uh, nose gear that is a little different and that's the shimmy damper if you will you'll see on most nose gear and it looks different on some of them than on others but it's that's essentially what that little piece of eye candy is all about right there so we're not going to worry about that right now the rest of this is what you're used to seeing uh, I might just mention the yoke. How, is, how, how does one do this yoke? Well, I think I started out with a uh, Taurus. Uh, the Taurus right here is the same way we created the tire. And uh, just made a round Taurus like that and then sliced off the bottom of it. Deleted the bottom of it. And then capped those uh, where I sliced it. And then uh, just extruded down like this and then capped the ends of it. As a matter of fact, these ends are still open. Yeah. Those ends are still open. <clears throat> so that's how you go about creating creating you know, a yoke like this. You could do it manually, but Lord, it'd take you 20, 30 minutes to get it looking right. So using the Taurus is a good way to go to create a full cover yoke like this. A lot of yokes are just one-sided. And uh, if you have one of them, you can start it the same way and just delete off the bottom and delete off the side and extrude one side and you're good to go. So, uh, with that said, I don't think there's anything else here that's new or different other than the primary difference, which is the steering mechanism. <clears throat> At the top of, usually, it doesn't have to be, <clears throat> and, but it is in this case, the uh, lower uh, strut, or oleo, there is a controlling mechanism called C-wheel. Sea wheel is a reserve name for animation and it is used to recognize how this castoring wheel and this is a World War II era aircraft and most aircraft back in those times nose gear and tail gear all of tail gear as far as I know um, were just free castoring free wheeling gear and that's uh, that's the way the nose gear was back at this time. So how does one go about <coughs> notice how this works and by the way before we get into that when you animate your uh, your upper gear strut and you animate
animate your lower gear and then animate your your uh, torque links here do all of that and save the uh, animation for this last because it's a little hard to animate these things when it's turning like this so uh, just do things in the proper order top top down do these torque links and when it's all done and you're happy with it then you can jump in here and and uh, animate the C wheel control see and one other thing this doesn't have to be an object that you see it can just be a polygon at the top of uh, top of your strut if you don't have a need for something separate like that just go to the top of this uh, oleo and detach the poly on top of it and call it sea wheel and uh, that'll work it doesn't have to be seen it can be hidden so how do we go about animating this well let's, uh, let's just hide everything up there because it's uh, so we can see what we're doing here all right so this is the part that controls the steering and the way steering is controlled is uh, through uh, 360 degree rotation when uh, you use this name C wheel and it's animated for a 360 degree turn to the uh, right or cl clockwise looking down on it clockwise looking down on it uh, Flight Sim then recognizes that as a uh, potentially a castering wheel. Now, in order for that to actually be castering in the aircraft config in the contact point section for this gear, there is a uh, for, for nose gear or steering gear, tail wheel, there's a deflection, uh, degrees of deflection left and right that on a lot of aircraft you'll see a 40 or a 45 sitting there but for castering you use 180 that tells flight sim that it is a castering gear and the steering for which is controlled by differential braking and or differential prop usage or engine prop speed so uh, if you use 180 the only way you're going to get this wheel to turn is by applying a left brake, right brake, or differential power on your engines and props. So uh, that, that's if you have 180 in the contact point zero, uh, can, uh, contact point zero uh, degrees of deflection parameter. Now, if you change that to 40 or 45 or whatever, then it can be steered the way you steer anything else so uh, with the uh, rudder uh, it doesn't it doesn't steer to the rudder deflection degrees it steers to the, uh, independently of that to the pedals so if you have rudder pedals so um, the way you animate this then is you got to make sure you have your pivot set local pivot Uh, and just align with world that's all you all you do here Let's see if I can get a better view of this I'll bring it down level <clears throat> as long as uh, X is one side or the other it really doesn't matter but you need Y point uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry Z pointing up and down through the axis and uh, once you got that done then it's just a matter of animating it and I usually go to the top view to do this and not that uh, the view of it makes any difference but it's just you need to watch what you're doing as you're doing it <clears throat> and then you go into animate you're sitting here with starting at frame 100 or 101 sometimes I do 101 sometimes I do 100 I don't see a lot of difference but you remember your top gear is 0 to 100 range in your suspension and this is a part of the suspension system animation <clears throat> it's connected to the lower gear and uh, the oleo <clears throat> and uh, so you need to create a rotate at, at 
100 and you need two other intermediate position keys. Let's go up to turn on the so you can see this you need position keys at two other points uh, rather than one. If you only use one and use it at 150 or the halfway mark you're going to be rotated 180 degrees. GMAX needs to know I guess which way this wheel uh, system is turning. Is it turning left or right? Well if you set it at 150 then you're going to have your gear setting at uh, 0 degrees here. At 150 it will be 180 and at uh, 200 it will be 360 or 0 degrees so you don't really give it a direction uh, because everything's at either full of straight ahead or back and the question is how did I get there? So <clears throat> You can put the keyframes really anywhere in here. You can use 25, 50, 75. I just use 33 and 66 or 67. Doesn't matter really as long as it's it's somewhere in between 100 and 150 and 151 and 200. That gives it a sense of direction. And once you do that and rotate, rotate it, you know. Uh, actually, I don't, I don't even stop here and do anything, I don't think. Do I or not? I forget. It's been so long. Uh, maybe I do. Maybe I, I rotate it 33% uh, of the way, and another 33 or 34% of the way, and then the full 100% is back to 360 degrees or zero. Uh, but if you go, uh, if you set it up that way, and you can see it working in GMAX and it's going to work in Flight Sim. So that's really the only big difference between doing uh, doing a nose gear. And let's show you where you see gear lower here. So gear lower must be linked to C wheel. C wheel is the parent because it's controlling everything down below that all the way down to the tire wheel axle etc. yoke. So everything in the oleo hierarchy must be linked to sea wheel. Now let's bring back, let's bring back the rest of the gear here. Sea gear. So we got it all back in here. And now let's look at it in perspective. We got sea gear controlling everything that's attached up top here. Everything is owned by sea gear there, and then. From that point, C wheel is is uh, linked to the parent C gear. So this guy, oops, no, I don't want to do that. C wheel is linked to C gear. So when this gear uh, retracts or extends, C wheel is going to follow it, and then of course your C gear lower is linked to that so it's going to follow it as well and since this guy is animated of course everything below that's going to follow it all right i hope all that makes sense and uh, another interesting aspect of this are these scissors usually uh, we think of the, the top torque link being linked to the top gear well in this case it needed to be linked to see wheel because it is rotating in sim and uh, we need the whole scissor set up or the whole torque link thing to rotate together so that's how you do that it took me a while to figure that out actually <clears throat> but it works and it works fine in the sim so that's kind of a summary of the similarities <clears throat> and the differences in the nose gear and the main gear so almost identical except for the one added part essentially and of course you have eye candy if you want to add it is the uh, the steering damper to keep it, the shimmy damper is what it's called sometimes so that's uh, those are your primary differences other than that everything is built the same as we did on the main gear side so I didn't want to go through all of that uh, recreating all this stuff you've already been through that it's pretty simple to do.
but this is the only thing that might throw you is like how do I animate this joker so that's the key to the uh, to the nose gear steering uh, let's see Let me pull up for you grief pull up for you what we set up here for uh, whoa dude See if we can get this end screen here. Alright, let's go down to the contact points and I'll show you that area I'm talking about here. Now, on this one, I'm showing 30 degrees. Because sometimes in testing, I just uh, get tired of fighting the wheel brakes and want to change it. But this really, for castering, needs to be 180 degrees. And if you want it steerable with your pedals, as opposed to your brakes or differential brakes, differential engines, just change it back to 30 to 45 in that range. And uh, that's how you control that contact point zero. And uh, your four aft distance of uh, your reference point, your left right, which is going to be zero for your nose gear, your how much above or below. The reference are we and uh, uh, zero means the nose or tail gear one and two is left right and uh, see this is the uh, the tire size the tire mm, diameter diameter I think it's the diameter <clears throat> and this is the steering deflection 180 and then these are your uh, uh, Static compression, uh, max to static uh, ratio, and uh, your uh, suspension damping, etc. So that's uh, that's the area I was talking about. Uh, by re setting 180 here, it makes that a uh, castering nose wheel or tail wheel, whichever. And if you change that to say 30 to 45 it then becomes I'm steering it with the rudder pedals so that's what that's all about so let's uh, get back here and now that we know those differences I think we you could uh, successfully set up a nose gear and have it working for you as it works for me um, let's see I don't think there's anything else here I've missed of course, the uh, top gear is linked to the fuselage, and I guess from here, all we can say is, I hope this has been instructional for you and uh, helps you in your nose gear setup. If you have any questions or comments, post them in, post them below the video here, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you back at the next video. Have a good day.